In this episode, I had a great talk with Suka. Suka was one of my first encounters on Vancouver Island, and we wandered a little through the life of a young man whose dream is still to become a professional soccer player. What was the most difficult phase in his life? What is it like growing up in Cairo? And what it feels like to regret things? You will find out in episode 20 of the Walkie Talkie podcast. Walkie Talkie, episode 20, from a very nice spot today, um, in the middle of Victoria, sun is shining, it's the 10th of October, it's warm, we're sitting outside on the deck, and my guest today is a very nice person, you called Sukar, Sukar and yeah. your, your real name is Hussein, yeah. we will go there on that, we'll uh, go on that um, yeah. later on, for sure, yeah, for sure. first question, for the listeners and for me, would like, do you remember when we met and how we met first time? I do. When we were coaching uh, when, at yeah. the Gorge, uh, it's a local soccer club here, for those yeah. who don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gorge and Lake Hill, which is another uh, local yeah. club, soccer club, uh, at their academy. They had a merging academy together. Yeah. And we went there. Am, yeah. I, am I right? You, you're right, yeah. Uh, almost, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And then we, yeah. I remember where well, right, because. Um, for me, it was a pretty exciting time. I just came to Victoria. Yeah. Most like the big purpose was trying to get a step in coaching soccer. Of course. So I went. Uh, I had this opportunity coaching in this camp. It was a spring camp, yeah. and I think it was the first time there. I was still kind of recovering from a hard <coughs> cold. Yeah. I was super nervous. How that is if you go to new places and meet yeah, lots yeah. of new people, and um, but I remember very well because you came over and you're smiling, was like, hey, I'm Suka, what's up? Yeah. Like, you, you're very positive energy. Yeah. So we will go, 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 go a bit in your story. Let's see where we go. It's a lot to tell. Yeah. Um, see where it's, it's a very, it very us. interesting yeah. uh, life so far, which you lived, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. One thing I always like to ask is, because I'm sure you had a lot of interesting encounters on your journey so far, yeah. but did you ever thought about Encounters in general, how you encounter, do you encounter, do you thought about it before? And if not, what do you think about it mm. in general? In general, just like meeting new people? Yeah. Maybe it's people, uh, maybe it's something else. I, I think, it's uh, a good question. <laughs> I'm always a person that likes to meet new people, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, um, I'm very, I would say I'm very um, outgoing. I'm very, I'm, I'm very extroverted, I think I am. But I also enjoy being alone, which is kind of weird. I completely feel you. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I, I I don't mind I don't mind being alone at all. So, uh, but I'm also very extroverted. I don't think social events, um, uh, which is very different from me and my wife, because she uh, she's always like she's also very extroverted and she doesn't mind social social things, but she, she thinks I'm like crazy because I don't mind social events at all. Mm -hmm. um, so no, like I've, I've encountering people here is it's, uh, in a different culture when I first came. I never had like this, uh, I I don't know. It's, it was easy to blend in, I think, because just because of who I am. But yeah, man, since 2016, I've met lots of people and... How was it before? Before 2016? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I born, because you, yeah. you, you, I'm born and raised in Egypt. Yeah. Um, if that's the question you're answering. And no, it's like, it's more like, um, how did the the way of encountering things maybe change in your life? I mean, I matured. So, I mean, I became more calm. Yeah. I'm not calm at all right now, yeah. but I was more like, oh, you know? Yeah. So I became more calm. I'm, I think just maturing, maturing just, just gives you a different idea and a different... Uh, a bit more aware. A bit more aware of who you're meeting, what their personality is yeah. like. You don't, you don't, you don't start a conversation, and you don't like um, encounter people the same. Uh, you just have to, like, you know, feel. I don't know what it's called. You know, when you dip your toes in the water. Yeah. You just feel the. Yeah. You just f take a feel of the person, and then yeah. you just don't like encounter everyone the same because everyone is different. Yeah. But I didn't know that obviously before. But when you mature and you get older, you start understanding that not everyone is the same. Like right. You know, yeah. How was it encountering me? You were very chill. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah, no, it was very chill. You're, you know, yeah. you, you weren't, it's not like you were quiet, but you're like, yeah. just not like, 
looked like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, before well, that... It would be hard to, to say something. Well, you could be honest. No, um, no, no, it's so. true. It's true, man. <laughs> Trust me. I give. I try to give the benefit of the doubt for people. I never try to meet someone being like, this guy looks like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, an you asshole or get a feeling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can cut that word out if you want. The asshole? <laughs> no. That's okay. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, you said already um, before 2006, because there was a big step. I mean, there's a lot of big steps in your life. Um, yeah. So let's go go back to your childhood, where you're from, yeah. um, how you grew up. Um, it wasn't Victoria, it wasn't Canada. It wasn't Europe. Where was it? it was where are you from? Cairo, Egypt. Cairo City. Cairo City, man. The biggest, uh, biggest city. Biggest in terms of population, although it's not, but you feel like mm -hmm. you're always, there's always a million people around you. So it's mm. all very, very different from Finland where I lived in before I came to, um, to Canada and Canada. Like mm. where you, you're here and you can't even hear like a car honk or anything. So yeah, very different. But yeah. So how was your childhood? It was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have the best family, honestly. I have, uh, I'm very blessed because my parents... Uh, although my parents got separated when I was uh, when I was young, probably 12 or 13, they still have the best friendship that I could ask for. And I have the best uh, stepdad in the world. So I have the best dad, best mom, best stepdad. And Yeah. So I think to let the listeners know why you have this journey of moving to different countries, the main um, reason for that was soccer. Yeah. So how did you start playing soccer? Why you started playing soccer? Was there, like, what's what's so special for you with this game? Yeah, I mean, it's when you're in Egypt, it's it's just all you do. You know, here, like, the difference between Egypt and North America is that you have so many sports here. Mm. You have hockey, you have field hockey, mm. ice hockey, mm. and then you have lacrosse, and then you have basketball, baseball, mm. all of these things, volleyball. Like, there's so many sports, and there's so many kids that take different sports. And in Egypt, soccer is easily the number one sport. Yeah. Which I could say the same thing about Germany. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, man, it's uh, it's uh, it's all I did when I was growing and up. And you probably didn't have much options. No, and I didn't want any options yeah. from what I remember. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't have many options, but I didn't want any other options. Yeah. You know, my, 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 my brother actually played water polo in okay. Egypt. And it's the only sport he's played. Yeah. So it's very different. And yeah. he, water polo is, I mean, It's not. It's pop. It's people know it, but it's not that popular. And he still no, played no, it. No. And he still plays yeah. it. My 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 brother is 31, and he's been playing water polo since he was since I could remember. Yeah. But I took soccer, and I, as a five year old or four year old, when I first remember when I first started soccer, I just I don't know, man, it made me happy, and I was always one of the best guys on my team, and I was just little small, and I used to dribble past people, and yeah. The coaches loved me and they told my mom he's special and all of these things. So I didn't have a reason to stop playing soccer. So is it like this, like if I see what you're saying, like it's like this small little kid having a ball, running to the streets in Cairo and with friends and playing street exactly. soccer and yeah. having amazing technical skills, which you still have. I saw that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, is, this, is this exactly like this? Like it's, running it's with your friends? And it's like, exactly like this. group um, of small kids yeah. running to Cairo and yeah. with a ball and yeah. like, nice. And, yeah. and, but like we did that, me and my brother. Even my brother didn't play soccer. We used to play on the street uh, in our neighborhood. Like mm. not, uh, we lived in a nice neighborhood-ish. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm not going to pretend like I lived on like, you know, bad neighborhood playing yeah. soccer. And, you yeah. know. But um, I don't know, man. It's, it's a big part of my identity. You know what I mean? It's a it's a huge part. It's everything in my life. I've always been soccer, 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 soccer. Yeah. Made me move three countries, like you said. And yeah, so but in Egypt we have like you go to um, imagine Hampton Park uh, Gorge. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there's a big gate around the soccer the soccer and where they go play like um, the bowling whatever it's called like the field bowling. Yeah. I don't know what it's, yeah. the sport is called. We could ask a Canadian about that one. And imagine this is a gated community with uh, with a membership and you go and leave your kid there and they play and there's security so that your, your kid can't leave. It's like dropping them at a private school, yeah. basically. Yeah. And this is how soccer is in Egypt. Okay. So there's sports clubs where you go and like after school, you have training with this sports club with, for example, Gorge. Mm -hmm. And you go and you leave your kid. But after that, there's a swimming pool, there's cafeterias, there's kid zones, there's everything. It's gated community. So your parents can literally leave you and then come back and then 
come and get you, and the, yeah. you're not allowed to leave. So yeah. it's very safe. So, so who, is, who gets access there? Members. So you yeah. and there's like expensive ones. There's yeah. non-expensive ones. There's yeah. medium ones. So your parents could just. So everyone in Egypt is belongs to a, any like. Yeah. To any and this is where you, club. where you where you. So this is where well. I played soccer. Also, yeah. like yeah. my parents were just. I was in a, in a club and I played there. And then one day, somebody or yourself already noticed as well. There is probably a chance to come become a professional soccer player. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, you wouldn't leave the country, I guess. Yeah. So what reason. happened? What happened is, is when I was in high school, I was grade 11. How old are you now? 27. 27. I just turned, turned 27. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. When was it? September 28th. So you're uh, almost 10 days late. Well, I had I had birthday on 1st of October. So oh. we are both hey, um, happy birthday. We're both liberals. late. Happy belated birthday, man. Liberal, right? Uh, Libra, yes. Libra, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Great people. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I was in high school and I was uh, playing at a decent level in Egypt. I was always small, very small. Mm. Still am, but I was smaller. And I thought my technical abilities were very good. Mm. You know, I had something special. So I tried to... I tried to leave the country and play somewhere in Europe. So I went to um, I went to an open trial. My uncle lived in London, so yeah. I applied for I wanted to apply for universities in London or in England in general. And but I wanted to play soccer, so or football. I'm just saying soccer because yeah, I got you get used to Canadian. Yeah. I know, yeah. Canada. But anyways, I think everybody knows now when I talk about soccer, it's football. Exactly, football is soccer. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyways, I I applied. I went to a trial at Cambridge United. They play League One or League Two. They're always bouncing from League One to yeah. League Two. Very professional team in England, Cambridge United. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go on open trial for it. Okay, so my uncle hooked me up and he he was like, come stay with me. And then he put How old me. How were you? I was 16, it was 2012 in October. So I was 17. I just turned 17. Yeah. It was the same time we are in right now. Yeah. But imagine exactly 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. Exactly yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. <coughs> so very special day mm -hmm. to have the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, it's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected, you know. Wow, 10 years ago, man. Time flies very quick. But anyways, I went to Cambridge United at a three-day trial. My my uncle put me on a bus from London to Cambridge, which is I, if I remember correctly, it was like a two-hour bus. I, could my memory be could possible, be so off, but, but I, I never went there. But so I, think I was in I, London, but not in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it was a two and a half or two-hour mm. bus. I got in. He booked me a, ho a hostel. My uncle paid for it, and I went in the hostel and just woke up. And it was like a very. It was the first. I'm traveling alone as a 17-year-old in right. England, and I'm super like. How was the English? It was good. I was in an American school okay. in Egypt, so yeah. I, my English was always decent. Yeah, but yeah, um, went to the hostel. Had no idea where I'm going. I didn't have Google Maps. Yeah, and then um, from I woke up and went to trial, and I had to ask the host, the lady that worked at the hostel, like at the hostel, how to get there. And she's like, "Oh, there's actually two guys that are staying in your room that are going to the same." I was like, oh, "Really?" Mm -hmm. So I became like kind of friends with them. And uh, we walked together, had the three-day trial. And then they said they're going to get back to us uh, two weeks from now. So I went, I was in Egypt waiting for the email. So uh, for people, they don't know what the trial is like. How is it? What's the idea of a trial? What's the Trial, they had an open trial, which is mm -hmm. different from an invitational trial. Yeah. So open invitation trial means like you get an invitation to try out with a team and you go play with their first team. Yeah. My Mine was just an open trial. Where people could just send their applications and... Hopefully yeah. you get in, and I got in, yeah. and um, you know you pay like thirty. I paid like thirty or forty British pounds. You just pay for the food that they're yeah. gonna give you between trials, and you just go and you just show just, yourself. Yeah, exactly. Show yourself. Yeah. It's basically they just run us through drills, and then and then they played with the second or third day that we just played a big game. Yeah, so uh, they made you play at least seventy minutes. Uh, if I remember correctly, and then we just got just got home to Egypt, waited for the email, and I got accepted. It was the best email I've ever had in my mm -hmm. life. Seriously, it was like I trained on on a, on a on a on a field, which is like it's like the Premier League fields. Yeah, no, but they didn't play in the Premier League, but it was like they play in that. And, your, and, your and, and your view and my view is like yeah. I just this is my dream came this, true. Yeah, but they didn't know I was Egyptian. 
I mean, they knew I was Egyptian, but they thought because I came to that trial is that I have a UK residency or like yeah. I'm half British or something. Yeah. So they were like, well, okay, you got accepted, but you can't, we can't give you a work permit. Because you're from Egypt. Because I'm from Egypt and work permit from, for, for non-UK residents for soccer. I don't know if you know that, but you have to have played in your national team. Mm -hmm. And you have to have been on their squad for 70% of their games for the last year or something. And I was like, I'm yeah. not even close to playing for my national team. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. so it didn't work. Well, it'd be closer than you saw it, but. <laughs> exactly, I, it was very flattering. Yeah. It fed my ego a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I got accepted there, but. It was it was heartbreaking because yeah. I it was I, the best mail you ever get. It was the best email I got, and then they actually and the worst as well. Exactly, they kind of like they were like, okay, we're gonna contact you soon to send you the thing to send you the schedule when you could come back and stuff. And then they went silent, and my, mm. my I remember my uncle had to call them from England, and they explained to him the situation. Mm. How was how was this this time for you? But noticing that this is not gonna work, it was I was very upset. Yeah. But it gave me the, it gave me, it, it kind of sparked some confidence in me that I, okay, I need, I want to leave Egypt. I want to play in Europe. And then I got in contact with um, an agency called Ames. Mm -hmm. uh, and they help people get scholarships in the States and Canada, which is actually one of the reasons I came to Canada at the end. Yeah. But before that, they were like, well, why don't you just try to go play in Europe? We can help you. So they helped me go and play in Europe and I went to Finland and I was... Finland was a very weird experience. I can so, imagine. It's definitely different than than Egypt and than England and Yeah. Especially in your age then. Exactly. And I I went for a 30 day I went on a visit a visitor visa for 30 days and they hooked me up with a club. The club was the club was playing in it remember it's promotion relegation, not yeah. in Canada. So it was a club that had they wanted to promote to third they were in third division. They had ideas, they didn't have money. Uh, so I went there almost like as a semi-professional player, but I didn't really get money. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they helped me with everything in life, but they didn't really, I didn't really get money from it. But and I played a couple, after playing there for like five, six games, I remember. I remember the coach came to me and he was like, you're very technically gifted, mm -hmm. very technically gifted. And we want to help you. We don't want you to stay with us. And it was a local club. They wanted me to go to their other local club who played in the first division. Mm. Okay. First division, it's not the the prem, the Veka, there's Veikaus Liga, which is like the premier. Yeah. It was actually the second tier. Yeah. The second tier is a stadium. It's fully professional. And they got me there and I started training with the team. And the team liked me. They were you like, were 18? I was 18. Yeah. I was 18, yeah. Alone. In this. Alone. No one there. Just me. How did you live? Like, what, what, you had an apartment or? They you... got me an apartment. Um, and my parents, cook... my parents helped me pay for it a little bit. Did you cook by yourself? I learned like... how to cook by myself. Mm -hmm. um, Buying groceries. Everything. I cooked. Or unfinished. I only ate pasta. Yeah, sure. It's the only thing I could eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wasn't very healthy. For breakfast as well? Like, no, I mean sandwiches. <laughs> But you warmed, know what it, I mean. warmed it up? Yeah. It was, I made the worst food ever, but I ate it. And I wasn't very healthy because as an 18 year old, used to just living with my parents, yeah. having someone make me food every day and just didn't worry about these things. So I was like very small, did not at all weight and stuff like yeah. that. I was good, man. Like just trained with that team for a long time. Uh, so I played with the team that I was signed for. Yeah. Uh, they signed me for a year and that's how I got my work permit there. Trained with AC Olo. Aciolos, they play in the Vekaus League and now they just yeah. promoted last year and it was the best experience. Now it's now it was actually my best experience of my life. Playing with training every day with players that are fully professional. Yeah. The team I trained with. I wasn't signed with them, but I was training with them. They were yeah. like sister clubs or brother yeah, clubs. Yeah, yeah. And it was incredible. I learned so many things and um, I trained with them for a full year, got got to eat for free with them, like the meal, the meal, like I got like, you know, like just after training, I would go eat for free because they had them in the clubhouse, got to every game for free. I was part of the club. Yeah. Went into the dressing rooms during games. Uh, didn't travel with the team, did not do that, but you know, got all the good things of being on a professional team, just didn't sign with the team. Played a couple of friendlies, got a couple assists with them. 
in the friendlies. So I always thought I was doing well, and that's why they kept me around. But yeah. it didn't work because I was an international 18-year-old. That to be honest, I wasn't I wasn't ready to sign. Like I wasn't going to be a starter. And if you're an international player, you have to be the yeah. Because they go through like inter, they have to get your work permit, they have to pay you a little bit more. Da, da, da. Yeah. And I wasn't a starting 11 player. Yeah. So they never signed me. My contract expired with my third division team. So why why was it like you said before? Um, Finland was a weird experience. It was weird because I was like you said, I, my English was good. And I lived there, and the culture is so different. The culture is so different, man, from Egypt. Like, and I don't speak the language. Finnish people are very well educated. Yeah. So everyone speaks English. Yeah. So everyone I knew how to communicate, but I would sit in a room full of 18 people every day, not understanding a word. So you it was frustrating. You always have to ask. Or to start a conversation exactly. to, to get and I don't in expect 18 English. people 18, I expect if I'm sitting with two people to not speak Finnish in front of me yeah but I don't expect 18 Finnish people to just change their whole and I was in nor northern Finland so it's not like a very like where exactly was it northern Finland Olo oh, what's Olo yeah it it was very different man mm. like I go to the dressing room and everyone gets fully naked we don't do this in Egypt right yeah we don't, we don't. Yeah. so I never got fully naked yeah. You know, you yeah. finish the game and everyone showers, but there's no like private stalls. Right. Everyone just showers. Yeah. How did you handle this situation? I was like, whoa. But I was fine. 18 years old. I just, yeah. I just showered when did I got you, home. Did you thought about that before? No, I didn't. It was, actually, it was actually kind of a surprise. Yeah. How, that was a surprise, but I, yeah, I, give us give us a view. How 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 was that first the first time when when you first walk, time I walked in the dressing having room having this situation and sitting in the dressing room and. Whoop, goes down the shorts, goes down the underwear. And I'm like, what's okay, going I on? I shouldn't be looking like, what the hell? I'm yeah, trying to like yeah. not be awkward, but it's hard not to be awkward because I'm obviously uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, but apparently that's the thing, man. <laughs> They do it here in Canada too, so. What did you do then? I just chilled. Yeah. But I'm very extroverted. And then they were like, oh, well, you don't show. I was like, guys, no, I don't get naked in front of guys. Sorry. Yeah. Religiously. And culturally, like, I'm, yeah. I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah. So I've always been, one thing I like about myself, sounds very narcissistic, but that I, I, I'm not, I'm always, I always speak my mind. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, like, if yeah. you ask me, I'll tell you. I'm not like, oh, no, it's fine. I'm just. I, wait, wait, if I would translate the German word for that is like carrying the heart on your tongue. I think I, I am. Probably Sometimes then. it's a problem. Sometimes it's a Say problem. Say what, what's coming up in your mind. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's an issue, but. It is what it is. It's me, right? Yeah. And uh, my partner loves me for that, so yeah, I think she does. She does what she says. Yeah. So. so it wasn't the problem that you didn't. No, I loved Finland, man. I had so many friends. Now that you everyone. didn't uh, do this kind of thing, like no, it wasn't a problem at all. Were, blah, blah, no, no, blah, no, no, no. We was... went to the the saunas together. Yeah. And we went to like I remember we went to the sauna and it was like a, it's someone's private property. They had their sauna and they all went in naked and yeah. I was like. I'm no. wearing my swimming shorts. Yeah. There's no chance. Yeah. So that was one thing about Finland that I was like, whoa. Yeah. I'm not living in Egypt anymore, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are uh people are as extroverted as Egyptians in Finland, so it was also something that was I had to get used to. Like people are as open. I'm not saying they're not friendly. Uh and same thing here. Finland and Finland and Canada are Finland is a little bit more, the people are a little bit more shy, but it's similar here. Like there's no, that's why I always say Egypt is going to be my home. I always feel the warmest and the, feel at home like Egypt. Egypt is always going to mm. be. Did you miss it? Of course, I miss it every day, man. Yeah. I miss it every day. I haven't been home in three years, which is the first time that ever happened because of COVID and mm. papers and stuff. But uh, is it worse for you to pay the price missing that? What you get question. here? Well, it's, look, if I do the same thing that, me and you are doing, which is trying to, we're trying to coach and trying to get into coaching and, and playing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make enough money to live in Egypt. I'd have to be a burden on my family and I can't do that anymore. I'm 27 mm -hmm. and my family have always been the most supportive. If I need anything from my family, I'd, they're a phone call away and they give it to me. Yeah, you know, they same. spoiled me growing up and same, yeah. they, they, they'd spoil me every, every chance they get and they enjoy doing it, but I can't like I'm 27 <clears throat> and soccer is still the most important thing in my life after my family. So if I if I do the things I want to do in Egypt that I'm doing here, I wouldn't make money. Here I can make a living in Egypt, I couldn't, so. 
it's yeah. it's a very it's a very tough it's a very tough uh, uh, choice, but it is what it is, man. It's life. Yeah. 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 yeah that's the that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, if you if you would would not able to be your passion in your home country or close to your family and friends, would you get less happy? It's a good question. And is it worth it to go away to live your passion but miss the other thing? Well, I'm I'm thinking about that every day. Yeah, every day. like is it worth it what I'm doing? Exactly. I'm so far. I always say yes because what I get is more than I ever expected. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's it's a tough choice, man. Yeah. And I could, I don't know. It's it's tough. I obviously miss my family every day. I'm very close. We FaceTime every day. Mm. So thank God for technology and FaceTime. Mm. And I have my all my best friends are in Egypt. So it's not just that I'm missing out on my family, I'm missing out on my all my best friends. Mm. That's what I'm missing too <laughs> often the most, you know, like yeah. just having a simple conversation with a friend. Exactly, man. Yeah. yeah. We're having it right now. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you know what I mean? It's it's there's there's pros and cons and everything. I go to Egypt, I I'm in my comfort zone, I'm with my family, with my mm. friends. What am I gonna end up doing for my profession? Mm. I would love to do soccer, but I'm gonna make no money for the way I want to live. Mm. And I have the best, I mean, she's kind of my girlfriend here, but she's actually Islamic, where we were going to yeah. get into, but like, she's my wife, Islamically. Uh, and I have the best partner and she's the most support, supportive. She moved to Prince George for me, man. Mm. I don't know if you've been to Prince George. I've but been there, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not like, yeah. love the guys there, but. Yeah. Let's, <coughs> let's, let's keep, let's, let's go in this direction because Finland was done. Finland was done. I couldn't renew my contract as I wasn't getting money enough to pay taxes to renew my contract. Mm -hmm. And the first division team couldn't sign me because I wasn't the international that's yeah. going to change a game for them. I was an 18-year-old, yeah. probably Talent, 55 yeah. kilos. Literally, I'm 62 now. Imagine me seven kilos. Yeah. <sighs> you could blow on me and I'd fly, yeah. but I yeah. was still very technically good. That's why they kept me, but yeah. yeah. So, so what, what happens then? So what happens then? I go back to Egypt. I apply for university. In Canada? In Canada. Why And Canada? Canada or the States. Mm -hmm. My grades weren't really good. Mm. So I don't think I would have so gotten to any... So you saw your options? I, I wouldn't have gotten to any Division One teams. Yeah. Firstly, because they're very expensive. And I had a friend that played was really good at so football. He went to uh, soccer. He went to Cleveland State University, Division One team. And he was very... He's a very good player physically mature, technically very good. And he got a very good scholarship and he was still paying like $8,000 a semester or something like that. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do that. So Canada was the cheaper option, was the, an easier option. And it just made more sense. And I had a friend who played for VIU who was Egyptian. And he hooked me up with the coach and the coach got me on a scholarship to go yeah. to VIU. Yeah. Started VIU, played three years. VIU is? Vancouver Island University. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it was it was a good experience. I don't think I um, it was a good experience. Let's put it like that. But I don't think I played my best football there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think I wasn't I wasn't free. Mm -hmm. And the type of player that I am is that I like the ball and I like to do my own thing. And if I my first five, ten, fifteen minutes are bad, I don't want to feel the anxiety that I'm gonna get subbed off. And anxiety that, and and I think most players that play like the way I do just want to be, just want to get their, get their touches first. Maybe yeah. the first 10, 15 minutes are not the best, but then when I get into a game and I blend in, and I didn't have the same, I didn't have the same thing. I felt like I was always getting. Gonna, if I play bad, I'm gonna get subbed off. So all I did yeah. with VIU play safe football, which safe, is not yeah. the way I play. Yeah. Yeah. So did I enjoy the experience? I love the guys that I played with. They're still some of them are still one of my closest friends in in Canada. Uh, but mentally, I don't think I was checked in with VIU. Although we won a national champion, I played every game in the national championship, so it was a great experience. But I still think I I didn't do my thing. Mm. I did my thing in practice. When it came to the games, I just wasn't Suka. I wasn't who I mm. actually am. And then yeah, moving to Canada, doing your scholarship. Keep going soccer. Yeah. Still the dream of becoming a professional? I have this dream every day. Still? Yeah. I mean, I I'm more realistic. Yeah. You know? I yeah. know I'm 27. Yeah. You know, I played for Highlanders. I played for UMBC, which I enjoyed a lot. Because I, 
Steve kind kind of gave me the freedom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, he tried to make me, he, he did make me a better player, I think. Yeah. You uh, just got a header in your last game for the header. Right? I know, I did. Which says, <laughs> something, which says something about Steve, you know? <laughs> he'll never touch the ball in my head before. Right? Exactly. But no, he, he, was, he was a great, he was a great mentor as a person. He's a great guy. Uh, and um, with UMBC, I just learned how to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. Mm. But I'm still, I feel like I'm, I still didn't, didn't reach my potential, man. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is. I just always, I'm kind of crazy, but 27 years old and I feel like I'm still getting better every day. Yeah. Getting freer and freer in my head. And uh, I'm a very mental person. I thank God, like I'm, I'm a very happy person and I don't, I don't suffer from any depression or anxiety. We all have our own anxiety, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say like I have friends, I have very close friends that like obviously it's a it's a struggle in their life, and I'm very right. lucky. But soccer is a very mental game, and I, for the longest time, I wasn't mentally strong. Yeah, and that's why I feel like I'm getting better because I don't think I'm technically getting better, but I feel like mentally I'm becoming more confident. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm becoming more mature on the field, and yeah. I'm, and I I'm just giving myself more worth. I'm very, I don't know if you know the five languages of love. Do you know that? I had this book in my hand, but I didn't read it. So it's basically how you give love and how you receive love. I've never read it, but I've had conversations about it. So mm -hmm. I'm not an expert on the book. Yeah. But basically it's how you give love and like, or you receive love. And it's like basically people that love acts of service. That's how you show your love or receive love. There's gifts and yeah. there's uh, uh, words of affirmation, uh, touch. And um, I forgot the first, uh, quality time. These are yeah. the five. If yeah. I'm, sorry if I'm wrong about that for anyone that's listening. But, <laughs> but I think that's the five. And I, am a, I'm, I'm, I think my number one is words of affirmation. So if I do good, I want to hear it. Right. Which is something that Steve Simonson, my UMBC coach, yeah. he knows. Yeah. Because he's, he's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. But the first thing is you have to know it. Exactly. But I know it. But I still want to hear it. Since when you know it? I know I'm good. Yeah, but but, I, but, but since when you know that you have to hear it? Always. Always. You knew that like, I, I, always, I uh, like, I need Exactly, that. but I knew yeah. it more when I grew up. I was like, that's my issue. My issue, like I, I played a good game and I've never been the guy, my, my biggest weakness in football is that my stats have never been good. Like goals, assists. Like that yeah. wasn't, that was never, I drop so deep for a winger. You've seen me against yeah. Highlanders. I come and get the ball from the center backs. Yeah. I'm comfortable like that, but I'm still a winger. So I never really scored goals. You know, I yeah. was never really the guy that got the last, I, I mean, I did get assists, but yeah. like it wasn't, I was never the guy that gets like, I was always in the build up play. And it's yeah. the same thing with Highlanders, you know, build up play, I'm there, but I'm never like in the box scoring yeah. goals. I was another poacher. So, Statistics wise, it's used like, oh, who scored the most goals in the league? Uh, not him, mm. not him. Mm. But he, I mean, he was good, but like he doesn't score goals. So I always wanted to hear because the stats didn't really. Yeah, because there's stats for the, the goal, stats, for the assist, but not for the pass there, before. But and... not for the pass before, <laughs> not for like the, how effective I was, yeah. not for the, how many like dribbles I took on, if I uh, caused danger. Mm. So I always wanted to hear that because statistically it wasn't on, but so I wanted to hear it. And Steve was, Steve helped me grow as a person and as a player, but hopefully he's hearing that now. He never gave me the words of affirmation, but I think he did it for the greater cause. Hopefully he did. You think you're still on the on the way to improve and maybe Plateau. can reach the <laughs> the highest level you're looking for? Well, age is a age is a big issue, obviously, because 27 years old and it's perfect. It's the it, best age. It is the best age, but for a resume, it's. Uh, It's tough, man. Like, like for for someone to pick up a 27 year old, is, yeah, sure. You'd rather yeah. pick a 20 year old, which yeah. is fair. But I mean, this is what I love about being in the soccer like industry now, coaching and stuff like that. That I could do both parallel. Like, I could still play. I could still train every day if I want. And if it happens, it happens. If it's not, I'm still working parallel to it mm. uh, to get my uh, to become a coach. So, so we're not alone here. Finn is joining us. The yeah. dog. So we heard it a couple times, Sukar. Where did it come from? Where does it come from? And what, what's, say, say again, you, you introduced yourself in the beginning, your whole name. Yeah. My, my whole name is, I'm going to pronounce it like how we do in Egypt. So it's Hussein. Yeah, you pronounce it in, 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 in. Well, it's Hussein. 
سيد حسين حسين yes. حسين صوت حسين وجدي احمد حامد سيد بحيري um, that's when my I, when I explain why it is so long where it comes from because it's, uh, you get your first name Hussein and then you get your first your dad's name your grandpa's name your grandpa's name grandpa's name the family yeah. name I, I'm thinking about what would, what would be my name then my dad is Andreas my grandpa which grandpa from your dad's side dad's side would be Anton yeah that's it no Or, you keep going you keep, you keep going? going three more and then oh, you can put know. your family name <coughs> there you go yeah. so I do which I think is cool it's cool yeah I've I, never, should, I will figure that out yeah so, so I've I've never, would, I would be Jan Andreas Anton something something something, something, something. which is cool that's, and that's why I think it's very cool because mm -hmm. I know my grandpa's name And I've yeah. never met him, never heard about anything about my great grandpa. Yeah. But I know who he is. I know yeah. his name, which yeah. is kind of kind of nice. His name was Hassan Wagdi Ahmed Hamid. Mm. And then there was a Sayyid. Mm. You know, so it's. So, it's but cool. there's no sukkah in it. Where's the sukkah coming from? So, sukkah comes. <laughs> I'm gonna make it as brief as possible. But when I was, uh, when my mom was pregnant with me, her best friend had a son. So, my mom's best friend's son. He was like four years old and he was like, what are you going to name your kid? And she's like, we're going to call him Suka. She's like, no, call him Ali or something. And she was like, no, no, no. Uh, no, 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 sorry. She's gonna, I'm going to call him Hussein. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, no, call him Ali, my best friend in kindergarten, in, in, in my baby class or wherever they go in their nursery or something. His name's Ali. And she's like, no, no, I want to call him Hussein, sorry. And whatever. She's like, okay, well, why don't we nickname him Suka? Because my best friend's nickname is Suka. She's like, let's do that. Mm. And then as soon as I was a baby, he started calling me Suka. And my mom kind of was like, ah, oh, we're Suka. Oh, Suka, Suka. So I literally had the nickname for as long as I had my actual name. Yeah. So it didn't really stem from anything. It doesn't yeah. have anything to do with Suka. It has nothing to do with Hussein. It has nothing yeah. to do with the family. It's just, it's just there. Yeah. It's just a name. Yeah. Just the just nickname. Yeah. And you, but you introduce yourself also as Suka, right? Because everyone calls me Suka. Yeah. It somehow always catches. Even when I went to Finland... Yeah. There was just someone that saw that my name on Instagram was Suka and they started calling me, what's Suka? And then they started calling me Suka and people call me Suka. Well, it's a name you you definitely like keeps more in my mind. Yeah. No, no, everyone. Every, my, my parents call me Suka. We're saying it as well. It's, but yeah. Suka is like you never often hear Suka and then yeah. it's, it's pretty... Yeah. My parents uh, call me Suka. My friends yeah. call me Suka. I don't think anyone calls me Hussein. Mm. So it's what I go with. Uh, so I was just starting introducing myself as Suka, which is... Just so I, you call me, I introduce myself as Hussein, and then you hear people calling me Suka, and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy lied to me, give me a fake name. Yeah. So. so Suka, what is the, the most difficult event in your life you went through? Difficult. Difficult? Yeah. Personally, or just like as a... Well, difficult time for people around me was uh, the Egyptian Revolution. When was that? 2011. So And that you, was well. You were in. I yeah, was in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. It was. Right. It was as. My, it was a difficult time for the country. It wasn't difficult for me because it wasn't difficult for people. It was kind of fun for the people because the people were like all together and we just went and we changed, started a revolution. We changed, it. we changed the system, man. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, but I don't remember it being difficult on me, mm. to be honest. You know, we we're on the streets. We knew we'd hear on the news people got killed, the jails broke, people are out. But everyone was together, so it felt very safe. Mm. But it was a very, very, very cool thing that I would always tell my kids one day and my grandkids. How old were you when, when that happened? 15 turning 15. 16. January 2011. So it was 15 turning 16. So it was awesome. Great time for Egyptians. Uh, obviously, scary times, but we all look at it right now. And it was good times. But so, what, <laughs> what exactly changed? The, uh, we, had a, we had a president that we had for 30 years. Yeah. Hosni Mbarak. So, and we kicked him out after 30 years and it was impossible. We did the impossible. It was not going to happen. Mm. And it did because 30, 40 million people are on the streets, literally, not even exaggerating. Mm. So he had to. There was no, there was no police anymore because the police got, they were just, honestly, like, Running there was clashes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So all the police just took their gear off or else they would have been in trouble with the citizens. Because yeah. we, if you saw a police, a guy wearing a police thing, that's... It's us or you, man. So you just take your uniform off. Yeah. So there was no cops in their country. The army kind of took over and we're like, okay, well, guys, just chill out. We'll do whatever you guys want. So that was the most difficult. How, how did that, like, do you remember the, the process when, before that happened? Yeah. 
Like the, how, someone, how some, they, yeah, someone, it, 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 always something happens that sparks her, right? So someone, yeah. someone started a Facebook page. It was called Kullina Khalid Said. We are all, it translates to Kullina Khalid Said. Khalid Said was a person. It's not mm-hmm. a word. It's not a word. So we are all Khalid Said because he was a guy. Uh, he, I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he got, he got beat to death by the police. Okay. Um, and then the revolution happens. Very similar to what's happening in Iran right now. Yeah. Iran. Iran. Yeah, Iran. That's how I said it. Yeah. Yeah. So very similar. They got beat to death and just the revolution sparked. And that's how revolution sparks, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it, people are just waiting for something big which, to happen. Which is too, and someone too to much. just spark yeah. it. And then yeah. just people are like, yeah. So that's what happened. They got beat to death. So it was honestly a revolution against the police brutality. And then it just continued on. Well, police brutality, we don't want this, this president anymore. And yeah. Just and then we just changed the whole system, so that was the most difficult thing that I was a yeah. part of. But it wasn't personally for me. Person, no, personally well, for me that's, that's was leaving Finland. Oh yeah, yeah. Leaving yeah. Finland was the leaving Finland was was heartbreaking. In which way? It was heartbreaking because I felt like I was very close to my dream. Yeah. To sign this contract with the first division team, not the team that I was playing with. Yeah. And. Um, and I knew I was good enough because they kept me around. I was the only guy they kept around for a year. So it was the fact that my visa expired and I couldn't renew it because to renew it, I had to have a, I had to have a legit contract that I was getting paid enough to pay the taxes or else I would have been like just breaking the rules. Yeah. So I couldn't renew my contract with the club that I was with. And this team just was like, it's tough, man. We have five internationals already or four or five internationals. You're a good player. We want to keep you around, but you don't have the citizenship. So we can't do anything about it. It's heartbreaking. It's like leaving my dream and then going back to Egypt. How did you handle that? I, as much as I can remember, honestly, I I handled it pretty good. It was it was very sad. I remember I remember getting on the train because from, I asked because I think there's millions of people, like talented soccer players like course, you, yeah. they make this experience. Yeah, because there's it happens every day. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. So that's why why I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll tell how, you how you handle a situation like this when you feel like your dream is breaking down. It's breaking down as an eight, as a nine, I was 19 by yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. So um, I remember getting on the train from Olo, northern Finland, to mm-hmm. Helsinki, the capital. Yeah. Uh, to get the flight back to Egypt, and I was heartbroken, man. I remember t- t- uh, texting people. Actually, makes me sad even talking about it. Texting texting my group chat. Telling them that thank you guys for having me, da 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 da, and I was bawling my eyes out on the. I was just crying on the train, like literally, just like I couldn't, like crying, couldn't take mm. my breath. Just it was, it was tough. Mm. Um, so I got home and my parents were like, "What's next?" Mm. I graduated from high school and I took a couple years gap that I wasn't studying, mm. and um, I was like, "I don't know. I still want to play soccer." So where should I go mm. that I can get both? Because I had to do education now. Because my parents were like, okay, well, I mean, we're very supportive of you, but it's been two years yeah. and Maybe soccer didn't it. work out so far <laughs> how you wanted it to. Yeah. Um, so I just applied for university, came with a big, big positive attitude. Uh, but I made lots of mistakes that I regret. I regret a lot of things I did in Canada, to be honest, when I first came to VIU. Mm. I regret it. I, I I know I hear so many people and so many young guys, like you said, that could say, "Well, I don't I don't regret anything in life." Mm. You do. I think it's bullshit. I think I everyone think, regrets yeah. something in their life. Mm. Honestly, I think it's a pile of bullshit. When you say I don't regret it, yeah, you do. People regret things in life, and it's fine I, to regret something in life. I had a I had a people who listened to a couple episodes before. Yeah. I had this conversation about regretting things. Yeah. You didn't do. Yeah. But I think regretting things you do. I regret things I did. <clears throat> of course. You, you, because I came to VIU. You can learn from that. It's a lot. Of course. No, I yeah. learned, man. And it, it, it just hurts me a little bit because I, because you feel like, what if I didn't do that? Because mm. look, man, I wish, that's not on video, but you can imagine me putting my head high. So I was there at soccer. Mm. My hand is very high right now. <laughs> not very high. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just in comparison to myself. Yeah. And then when I came to Canada, I went zoop just dropped. Yeah. Why? I didn't eat well. I didn't sleep well. I went to parties. Yeah. Uh, Soccer was not my priority anymore. I tried to blend in so much with the Canadian culture and the university culture, parties every weekend, uh, da-da-da-da, 
uh, not sleep enough and go to games, uh, wake up, uh, oh, we have, I have a game in two, in two, in two hours, what am I going to eat? Uh, Nutella. Yeah. And the priority mentally and physically wasn't soccer anymore. Although it was my f the only thing I enjoyed, the most thing I enjoyed in my life, but it was fun seeing this new like university life. Yeah. So I just became two, like two times less the player I was. Like I told you. And then mentally, I couldn't get on par with, with VIU, with my coach, how he wanted me to play, if he even wanted me to play. Mm. And yeah. there was an international rotation. We, had, we could only play four internationals. There were six. So I always rotated with my other winger, who's a very good friend of mine. And thankfully, when it came to playoff games, I always played. But it's like, you're mentally not in the season when you're one game on, one game not even in the roster. One game starting playing 90 minutes, one game not in the roster. Your brain just starts getting it's like, like, dude, like, am I good enough? Of like, course, if I'm good yeah. enough, like, you're gonna play me every game. Yeah. So man, it was it was tough. So I regret I regret not staying focused on soccer as much as I did because the CPL started, and I feel like technically I could have been somewhere else, but I wasn't I wasn't good enough anymore yeah. Yeah. to play in the CPL. Yeah. Because I just wasn't, soccer wasn't my priority, so I just became the player. And then when I went to UMBC, there was a lot to learn, a lot of confidence to get back, a lot of confidence to get back. And uh, a lot of things to learn, not to learn, to relearn, because I was very good in Finland, man. Like, I remember in Finland, I was, was playing with uh, professional players. Mm. I, have, I have a friend called Rasmus, who played, who got an assist against France. You know what I mean? Played for the Finnish national team. Yeah. They all, they, he, he would have been in the Euros last Euro. Yeah. Uh, he got injured. So it was, it was tough. It was tough because I just lost the momentum. For three years, I wasn't training. I wasn't... So, so obviously, you just... You know, would, would you... Um, you probably would. Um, but let's go back to the situation when you left Finland. Yeah. Would you feel or would you do the same like you did in back in the days in what like, like the, in the situation would you would you like when i come to canada again no when you left finland yeah having this heartbreaking situation yeah. my dream is kind of done yeah um how would you handle the situation today like imagine you're very close here to to reach your level yeah and then getting the notice like no <laughs> So, like in your age now, like, would you, how would it affect you today? Oh, how would it affect me today? <clears throat> yeah. It would still be heartbreaking. It would? 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I'd lie if I say it wouldn't be as, as heartbreaking. Mm. I think it would be even more heartbreaking now. And I'll tell you why. Because when, it, when your heart is broken as a 19 or 20 year old or an 18 year old, there's still time. There's lots of time, yeah. So you're like, You still, you still got time. Yeah. But as a 27 year old, I'm not saying there isn't time. For a soccer career. Short, it's short, exactly. It's so much shorter. It's, yeah. it's no, you're. What's happening because there's lots of lifetime <coughs> left. Yeah. And there's other things to worry about in life. <laughs> yeah. But it's, and that's the part of maturing, right? Yeah. That's part of maturing. So I, I, I kind of, I'm realistic now that it's most probably very hard to happen. Yeah. Um, but and but there's other things to worry about. Yeah. But it's, it would still be very heartbreaking. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like if you get a chance and it just doesn't work out, yeah, I'd be very upset. I'd probably cry a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you, do you have an, uh, an an role model, an idol? It's always been messy. It's always been messy. Always been messy. It still is. So I think it's always gonna be. Mm. And uh, I mean, I think I think a second one that I had when I was 24 was Jamie Vardy. Because his, his story is incredible. Mm. And just because he was, as a 27-year-old, he was still not professional. Mm. You know what I mean? He was playing like tier, what, 26. He was still uh, 26 or 27. And his first Premier League game ever, he was 29 or 30. And he became one of like top 20 top scorers. And he became one of the best strikers the Premier League has ever seen. Yeah. And that's what I always say. There's so many amateur players I always say that we kind of overrate professional players a little bit. We just put them in this caliber that they're, they're non-human, that they and they're human, man. Like exactly, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're 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 human and they're very good at football, but 
you could still take go a one on one against a professional player and make him look silly. Yeah. Like I honestly believe so. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done it when yeah. I was 19. I played yeah. with guys that now play for the Finnish national team and play in the Swedish league and stuff like that. And I remember I was like, wow, I was 18. They were like three, four years older than me. They ended up going somewhere and I was like doing very well against them yeah. in training sessions. Like they couldn't, some of them couldn't get the ball from me. You know what I mean? Like some of them. And Yeah, I think it's a whole mix of of not just talented or skilled. Or, exactly. Like there's so, it's so mental, many man. things. I think confidence yeah. is just the... Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. The confidence and the mental thing is, yeah. is it gets bigger every day. Yeah. Like and it's I think, more important. It yeah. gets and I think by the time I, by the age I mature, I just I'm on the field and I'm just feeling so much more confident than I did. Mm. And I'm usually a very confident person in general. Like I'm not, I never I never struggled with like, oh I'm not confident, like I'm small, I'm like you know, the, one of the shortest guys. <laughs> it yeah. was never really bothered me. I've always had friends, I've always been confident. But when it came to soccer, I always, see, it's kind of a weird one, because I always knew, I always have so, such high belief in myself, but I didn't know if people thought mm -hmm. the same thing. It's kind of weird. Mm. You know what I mean? I was like, no, well, no. For me, it was sometimes the opposite. I had people around me, they believed in me and said, like, you're good. Yeah. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see so it. So weird. I'm the, I, I, I'm the then exact then you, opposite. Then you play shit, because if you, don't see yourself good enough. Same thing. Yeah. So, so the result for me and you is the same. You yeah. end up playing bad. Yeah. Or not exactly. playing your yeah. potential. Yeah. Because I have confidence in myself. Yeah. But because back to languages of love, I wanted words of affirmation. I want yeah. people to tell me, yeah. this kid's good. Yeah. But you mature and you you know that people just don't tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Like people just don't come and tell you, man, you're very good. They say behind your back. Yeah. Because they, yeah. For some yeah. reason. How was, um, you said love. <laughs> yeah. So he, you, you, get, you get a lot of love from your, how, do you, how would you say it? It's, it's obviously your wife, yeah. but in Canada, it's obviously not your wife. Yeah, well, people won't understand it. So, yeah. <laughs> so. What's, the, what's your situation with that? All right, it's... Uh, all right, we're gonna <laughs> gonna get into this. So, um, so I I'm a Muslim, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure people know what that is. I'm pretty sure people know what a Muslim <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, it's like two billion people out of the yeah. world's population, 1.8 billion, yeah. which is like almost a third of the world's population are Muslim. So I, uh, I I've I've always been a Muslim. I've always believed in it. I've always had a, um, you know this. Uh, passion about my religion, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, by when I moved to Canada, I kind of drifted away a little bit. You know, I was I just wasn't praying my five times a prayer. I don't know if Muslims pray five times a day. They fast. It was always fasting, but like the prayers are like five times a day. I wasn't praying. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing the things. And then when I got in a relationship with my girlfriend. Wife. Wife <laughs> from Kamloops. Yeah. Canadian. Yeah. To non-religious. Yeah. Okay. I started being like, okay, well, Islamic Islamic relationships, you should be married, basically, to live together and stuff. Yeah. And we lived together, and I started not not feeling guilty, but feeling like, you know what, I want to go back to my roots. I want to learn about philosophy. I want to learn about religions. I want to just kind of make sure that if Islam, if I if I think Islam is the truth, then it is the truth. I just don't want to be like a born Muslim. I want to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Somehow Emma, Emma's my girlfriend, she sparked that thing in me for some reason because I started praying and she started asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very open-minded. She'd be yeah. like, so what, what is that? Like, why are you why are you going up and down and yeah. praying? You've seen like when Muhammad Salah scores, he kneels, yeah. Paul Pogba, Benzema, these guys are all Muslims and when yeah. they score, they, you know. Anyways, so this it kind of sparked that little thing in me and I started knowing okay well I need to know more about my Who religion <laughs> exactly I need to know more about my religion yeah. other religions because she's gonna ask me questions because yeah. we live together and she's she ha, she should ask me questions because it's part of my identity as well you know what I mean so I started getting so into philosophy and philosophy of religion and just learning about Christianity learning about Judaism learning about uh, Islam, about uh, Baha the Baha'i faith, 
learning about Hinduism, Buddhism, just not learning deep, but like just understanding where they come from. And I came to a conclusion that I believe Islam is the truth. Because yeah. every Muslim in the world believes Islam is the truth, that's why they're Muslim. Yeah. And every Christian in the world believes in Christian, Christian in, because that's why they're yeah. Christian. And yeah. they believe that everything else is not true. We respect you for what you believe, but it's wrong. Uh, because that's and therefore I'm Muslim and therefore you're Christian therefore you're Hindu therefore you're Buddhist so, so let's without sugarcoating that's how religions work that's how religions work and we learn how to coexist together and it's fine so Emma started asking hopefully. questions hopefully hopefully 100% that's, mm. that's the plan that's, you know, that's, 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 that's the, the, the end goal world, yeah. and that's what every religion tells you to do but people are just yeah. go crazy <laughs> so Emma started asking me questions about religion she Starting, but why, but why, but why, but why, but why? And she believed in God, but she didn't really believe that any, any religion could be true. Like, what's the evidence? Da, da, da. So mm. we got into it and I showed her like, you know, there's scientific truths in the Quran, but the Quran is the, it's like the Islamic Bible. Mm. The Quran, that it could be true. There's evidence here. There's historical prophecies that happen, da, 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 da. And, you know, the literature is so rich and it's been, basically it's been, um, <coughs> It hasn't been changed. Like the Quran is the same here as if as it was 1,500 years ago, uh, which is stuff. She started reading, 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 and she decided to convert to Islam, mm -hmm. which is kind of. I, I wasn't. I never asked her to. Yeah. Uh, it was never in my prerequisite. Yeah. From her to when we get married, the only thing I ever told her was like, I want to raise my kids as Muslims, and when they're of age to do whatever they want. They could, but I'm going to raise them for the Islamic values. I'm going to teach them how to pray. I'm going to teach them how, uh, to fast during Ramadan, all of these things. And she was completely fine with that. But that sparked her interest in also religion because she's like, oh, I want to marry you. So if my kids are going to be Muslim, I just better just learn about the religion to know yeah. what I'm talking to them about. I don't have to be Muslim myself, but yeah. just to understand what my kids' religions are. She decided to convert in 2020. And after that, we decided to go tell only our parents her parents, my parents, that she converted, they were supportive. Yeah. And we got, uh, she's calling me right now. <coughs> she could wait. You can go on. No, it's okay. You can cut it off. No, she knows. She knows mm -hmm. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, we decided to get Islamically married at the Nanaimo, you know Nanaimo city? Yeah. Yeah, at the Nanaimo mosque. We went, just the two of us. Our parents knew. They gave us the blessings. We went and just got married, married there. And... That's it, man. Then we hopefully we're planning a wedding just for people to come and say hi and stuff. Yeah. Hopefully in Egypt. Yeah. Um, when I'm when I get my papers sorted. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but the interesting thing is that you're obviously not married here in Canada. So yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. No, that's no problem. That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how I so started. So we're not this. married in Canada on paper, but we're common laws because we've been living together for three years. Yeah. Therefore, I can apply for my permanent residence. Yeah. But we didn't get the. I don't even know what it's called. Like when you go get married and on paper, get married on paper. We're going to go yeah. to court and sign papers yeah. that we are legally yeah. married in Canada. Uh, but in Egypt, we'd be we'd be legally married. But not because here. Islamically, Egypt is a is Muslim majority country, so you'd be married in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But not here, no. So when I when I introduce her, sometimes I just introduce her as girlfriend because that's what she is mm -hmm. to me in front of people. They won't understand Islamically married. I have to say this whole story. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just to cut to the chase. Yeah. <clears throat> is that a problem in some way to no. have this issue, or is it all no, good? All, no, we're all good, man. Yeah. 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 We have it on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. My last post, yeah. kind of told the whole the world that we've been like yeah. um, Islamically married for two years. Yeah, but yeah, man, it's. Uh, Is there a way to get that legally in oh, Canada? No, no, no. We will. We, we just want to do it. Uh, we're gonna do it hopefully next year. But we want to do like, like a little, not even a ceremony, but we want to do like a little something maybe in her grandparents' backyard yeah. or something, yeah. just for her grandparents. Right. So they like. They feel like they're a part of it, yeah. and her parents as well. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, we talked a lot about soccer and moving from places to places and dreaming about this coming a professional soccer player. And now you you also said I'm more realistic because I learned so much. And um, is there something you would ad an advice for for young players or kids? They dream about a, a professional career. 
you would give them on their um, hand and say, hey, yeah, it's, it's that, pretty... that would be a thing what I would do better next time if I get another the yeah. second chance. If, or, I'm, I if, I, if I'm 18 again, I wouldn't get distracted. I wouldn't try to... I wouldn't get, you're going to get distracted by going out and not training, to hang out with people and become social. I think be, becoming professional is, could be a very lonely process um, because you, everyone, is, everyone is chilling and hanging out and smoking weed and drinking alcohol, but you're not. Yeah. But it's worth it at that. It's worth it. It's, it's, so, it's so worth it. Yeah. I, and, I, and I've never been professional. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But I came close. Yeah. You know, I've I've came I came close a, a few times, so I've came very close, like t- like you know, that's yeah. like I could see it. it's right yeah. there, man. It's right yeah. there. Training yeah. with them, I'm there, um, and it's worth it. I would. That's I regret it. I regret not. I regret getting distracted by. What well, would be helpful to to not get distracted in, in the age of 17, 18, 19? You avoid. You avoid these things, man. But how? You avoid it. You avoid going to a party. So you need a very, very strong confidence. Of course, and say, you avoid going to a party. You avoid you avoid things that you know they're gonna make you weak and like, oh, okay, I'm gonna stay up until 4 a.m. today. Mm. Uh, you avoid eating unhealthy food. You avoid the things that are gonna slow you down because these things are so tempting. You know, mm. find a good girl. Don't be don't be chasing girls. Yeah. For for you know what I mean. It's honestly. Yeah. Find one good girl that supports you, that supports your lifestyle, that's not bored by your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and you'll be fine. You know, as long as you have a little family at, at your house. I uh, think that's, that's the key. 100%. Man. Your environment. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of young marriage. Mm. Oh, and, yeah? I, and I know it's not really something that's recommended, mm. but I think getting in a serious relationship when you're young and you grow together. But that's that's the most difficult part, is, being is, able to grow together. Of course it is. But if yeah. you do it, yeah. you'll achieve the things. That's the, that's the main goal for every look relationship. Look at professional soccer players. Yeah. Well, that's the main goal for every relationship. Of grow course. together. I know. But, but, I mean, but the distractions keep you apart. You want to yeah. still, you want to stay, I'm not ready for a real relationship. Mm. I'm ready to stay single. I, I love her, but I'm not ready to uh, commit yet. There's too many, yeah, commitment options. Why? Yeah. Why? It's because your priority is not in professional soccer. Because mm. if it is, you wouldn't care. Mm. You're ready to commit. Because the only because you're committing to soccer, you can commit to your relationship. But you're not ready to commit because you still want to fool around. Mm. You want to go party, you want to drink, you want to smoke weed. You want to Maybe you don't want, girls. but you can. Huh? Huh? Maybe you don't want, but you can. Exactly. This is the tricky thing. It is. And that's part of maturing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's part of maturing. So I think if you eliminate these, and by the way, you eliminate these distractions by being in a serious, serious relationship. Mm. I know so many people, so many people that got married at 20, 21 years old and they're still married, happily married. They have kids. Mm. Life's good. Yeah. You know? yeah. And people would say, oh, but, but people get divorced if they marry young. Well, people get divorced when they marry old too. <laughs> you <laughs> exactly. know what I mean? Like yeah, it's not yeah. working. If it's not, it's not working either ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think these are so, one of the So, reasons. getting married early, I think so. <laughs> if you get divorced, you have still of, time to fix things. It's, yeah, no, but yeah, it's true. You yeah. know what I mean? Get married early, be committed to family and soccer, and you will, you'll reach your goal. Yeah. But if, you are, if, your, if your priority is not fully for family and soccer, you will not become a professional soccer player. Unless you're Neymar or something, you know what I mean. Unless yeah. you're like outrageously good, which is like the players of like Barcelona, they can do whatever they want because they are they're so good. But like I'm just talking to the average. But people, also, like they a, had an environment which make that happen. Of course, of course. So there's not yeah. like because this. And Neymar had a kid existing. when he was 18 or 19. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's very important. If you see boxers like Ryan Garcia, the boxer, I don't know if you know Ryan Garcia. Mm-hmm. He has a kid. And he had a kid like three years ago. Mm. He's like 23. Because these people, mm. their priority is only family and only... Because there's all, pr- family has to always be priority. Because mm. if you don't have family, it's your backbone. You know what I mean? You need it for soccer. Exactly, it's yeah. a prerequisite for soccer. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. You see the, the poor Brazilian guys that grew up and became professional players. They said fam- familia, familia. They always talk about their family. Always. Tattoos on their fa- of their family. 
And uh, yeah, you want to become a professional player, you have to eliminate the parties, you have to make, because it's not worth it. You'll grow, you're, when you're 24, 25, you'll start growing apart from these things. And I swear you're going to look back and be like, yeah, there are fun times, just don't remember half of it. You can still make party with 40. <laughs> True. <laughs> if, if soccer doesn't work out, you could party after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's, that's, uh, that's my main takeaway of that, honestly. That's a good it's, it's, it's fine to regret some things, by the way. It's fine to regret. Yeah, regret things you did and yeah. learn from it. Yes. Yeah. Of but course. Don't regret things you never did. No. That doesn't make sense. For me, it, it doesn't you, make you sense. Why would you regret something you didn't do? How do you know that you even regret it? Well, we don't want to go in yeah. there, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, yeah. But yeah, no, I regret things I did for sure. And you learn from it and you try to make it better in the future. Yeah. That's, that's, and maybe it's too late, but if not, at least I'm going to say, hey, I tried. I tried. I tried. Yeah, that's the that's because you could regret most... it if you didn't try. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe you're right. Maybe you're on something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, thanks uh, for this conversation. And, of course. And, and, Sorry, um, I talked uh, talked your ears off. That's good. Yeah. That's what I wanted. So you wanted? Okay, good man. <laughs> we could go on, but it's, yeah, yeah. We got a beefy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, we, we finish it points. with um, keep the family close. Keep your focus on your passion and your dream. And avoid the things that are going to distract you, even if they're very tempting. And if you're not able to avoid it, talk to your family and your friends. Of course. That's why you need help. good people. They should have, help. They have good people around you, so it helps. Yeah. They'll tell you not to do it. Thanks for sharing your stories. Of Thanks course, for anytime. I really enjoyed it. Felt like a therapy session. Anytime. We can do it again. Of course. <laughs> anytime. Episode 21 with Suka again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for listening. I'm not